we could be in the savannas of Africa. But we're in Germany, a natural paradise that's virtually unknown, and with good reason. This is the Zena region, a large part of which serves as a military training area. Here, where tanks thunder through, rare animals employ a whole arsenal of unique survival strategies. They're the specialists in a landscape created by man. Actually, only soldiers are allowed in this restricted military area. But follow, dear, don't follow orders. Some of the herds on the military training area number up to a hundred deer, which is not often seen in Germany. Because of all the unexploded ordnance, it's strictly keep out for human beings, which suits the fallow deer just fine. Live munitions have been used on the training ground for 130 years. Civilians are seldom allowed to drive through the area. Getting out of vehicles is strictly forbidden. Behind the gates and fences, a natural paradise has developed the size of 40,000 football pitches. The military training ground that's been under British military command for over 70 years is part of a widespread network of nature conservation areas. In Germany's most populous region, the Zena is a rarity a large, undeveloped area. The soil in the Zena is sandy and low in nutrients, perfect for heather. Nowhere else in northwest Germany is there such an expanse of heathland. People used to live here at one time. Over the years, their villages had to make way for the military. All that's left of them are a few ruins. But the old walls are now providing a home for different creatures. A sand lizard is hunting for prey. These reptiles are increasingly rare in Germany. Not in the Zena, though. A green lacewing larva uses tiny stones as camouflage. But the camouflage is rumbled. While elsewhere the habitats of the sand lizard are dwindling, the military training area offers them a safe home. The military built this as an observation tower. Now it's made use of by a feathered hunter. Peregrine falcons are breeding in the roof. These birds of prey make things easy for themselves. Instead of building their own nests, they take over those of kites, buzzards and other birds. They also avail themselves of the advantages of towers. 
somewhere secluded to live with sensational views. Not that the parents have time to enjoy the panorama. Only one of their chicks has survived this year. But even just one hungry beak is enough to keep them on the go. No pesticide is used on the training grounds, so the food here is completely organic, perfect for growing big and strong. In the 1970s, pesticides like DDT badly hit animal prey. Peregrine falcons produced hardly any chicks. Germany's largest falcon species nearly died out until DDT was banned. It was only in 1992 that peregrines began breeding again in this region. Now there are around 225 pairs. The chick stays in the nest for 40 days. With no hungry siblings competing, the only child's chances of survival are good. Soon it will be joining its parents and flying over the open countryside of the Zena. Then it will be sharing its hunting grounds with metal giants. Predators made of steel. Germany's armed forces use part of the military zone for tank training. The tracks of the assault tanks gouge deep wounds into the earth. Devastation that has surprisingly positive aspects. The open sandy areas attract other armoured-plated predators, though somewhat smaller in size. Northern dune tiger beetles are in command here. One of them has made rich pickings. That attracts other envious beetles. Another contender, encircled. The attacked beetle has to abandon its prey and beat a hasty retreat. When they don't rob from others, the predatory beetles capture their prey through lightning surprise attacks. For this, they need flat, sandy runways. Tank tracks are perfect. But on hot days, the hunt can be a washout. Heralded by thunder, the storm discharges itself over the Zena. Rainwater collects in the tank tracks. The heavy tanks have compressed the soil, 
so the water can't seep away. It's not long before the first pioneers storm the new puddles. Male natterjack toads vociferously caught the females. Their calls resound for up to two kilometers. A choral performance that's heard less and less often in Germany. There are now very few places like this where toads can reproduce. They love puddles like the flooded tank tracks. Here the female lays her eggs in spawn strings up to two meters long. The 5,000 or so eggs have to develop quickly before the puddle dries out. In the warm, shallow water, it takes just three to five weeks for metamorphosis to take place. The tadpoles turn into toads the size of a thumbnail. At first, the young of the now rare natterjack toads stay close to the water. But their home will soon disappear, the signal for the march out. They have to get a move on. The soil will soon be scorching hot. Those who can find themselves a shady spot. But they are few and far between on the army training grounds. In summer, everything heats up. What can survive here? The mouse ear hawkweed has developed a neat trick. It turns the hairy underside of its leaves upwards. That reflects the sunlight and the plants don't dry out. Another survivor, the sand sedge, holds on to the sand with a widespreading underground network of roots. Many of the plants thriving here have small, fleshy leaves for storing precious water. A habitat for survival artists. These tracks are made by a bunker builder which lurks hidden in the sand. The ant lion. Hard to imagine that this larva mutates into a graceful dragonfly-like insect, the ant lion lacewing. For now, the little lion lives in the ground where it builds an emplacement within minutes. From this position, it fires live ammunition. Hit by this sustained fire, the victims drop into the dugout. Very few escape. The loose soil seals the fate of most of them. The sand is the perfect hunting ground for the little lions. A whole army is stationed here. The pincers of the ant lion are armed with poison, but the bug is hard to grab.
Despite fire from all sides, airborne tactics are a help for escaping the enemy emplacement. Bug to go. The female sand lizard would also have liked to catch the winged treat. But at the moment, she's on edge. How can she go hunting when he's there? She's giving him the cold shoulder. Even though the male is wearing his smartest uniform, Brilliant green, especially for the love interest. But she's still underwhelmed by his natty look. The male will persist with his dress parade for hours. Unless the female surrenders in the meantime. A spirited flank attack lets him maneuver his abdomen underneath hers. And that's all it takes. Faithfulness is not for sand lizards. While she recharges her batteries with sunshine and the eggs develop within her, he will be after other females. The sand was deposited here in the last ice age by melting glaciers. It's a thick layer up to 60 meters deep. Outside the military area, it's still excavated commercially. Old gravel pits and transport routes are taken over by amphibians and insects. And by an especially fearsome predator, the larva of the dragonfly. Its favorite prey is the mayfly larva. On its head, it bears a lethal weapon. Once snapped up by this labial mask, resistance is futile. The mayfly larva will be its last meal underwater. A few days later, the dragonfly larva climbs up to the surface. The larva breathes in to inflate itself until its armor bursts. Metamorphosis has begun. Next comes the most difficult step, turning round. If the dragonfly falls into the water at this stage, it will die. It carries on inflating itself until the wings can also unfold. After five hours, the metamorphosis is complete, from underwater creature to winged hunter. The loose, sandy soil here once posed a problem. 
In the 19th century, the wind would cover fields with it and even whole villages, so the locals planted pine trees. They grew fast and held back the sand. They're still standing today in rank and file, but they don't provide many creatures with habitats. The federal foresters are changing the coniferous forest into a dense mixed woodland, which is also better at absorbing the noise of the tanks and artillery exercises. And thick oak trunks are better at stopping ricochets. Slowly, the mixed forests are replacing the coniferous monotony. Biodiversity is spreading among trees and animals. People aren't allowed into the forests, so the animals can live undisturbed. It's here that the fallow deer can withdraw when the soldiers are using the shooting range. Where dogs are not allowed, the European rabbit also proliferates. Undisturbed by walkers, black storks can fish in peace. In the midst of the military exercise areas, this is a neutral zone in which even a timid badger can search for food in broad daylight. The young badger is exploring on its own for the first time. The forest floor has so many delicacies to offer. Earthworms, snails, nuts, a land of plenty. Back home, the runaway has already been missed. On the double. Back at the set, the parents keep a watchful eye on their young. At the slightest disturbance, the youngsters disappear underground. No wonder that elsewhere, badgers are seldom spotted. The military training grounds offer them a secure nursery. If the military were no longer here, the badger's peace would probably also disappear. Walkers and dogs would turn the badgers back into timid, nocturnal wanderers. Just a few kilometers to the east, the Zena offers a completely different face. Springs here enable very special habitats to flourish. They're free of pollutants. There's no agriculture here. Not just on the training ground, Almost all the surrounding land is a conservation area. Some of the creek valleys are completely untouched by human hand. Branches and trees are left where they fall. Fascinating fungi readily flourish here. Rotting wood and foliage provide nutrients both on the ground and underwater. Tiny floating particles feed caddis flies and freshwater shrimps. They provide a good meal for the larvae of the rare fire salamander. European bullheads and river trout, extinct in many areas, enjoy the clear waters here. But that doesn't mean they're safe. The 
common kingfisher is kept busy. Three hungry chicks expect the full service package. So both parents are constantly fishing. And the chicks are thriving. Fish after fish, and even so their hunger is insatiable. Streams and creeks in the Zena are officially protected, so the chicks have excellent chances of survival. There are plenty of steep, sandy banks here. Some streams have carved themselves up to 25 meters into the sand layer, ideal for kingfishers to hollow out their burrows. Only a few stretches of water in northwest Germany remain virtually unchanged by human beings. These include one of the most important natural reservoirs in Germany. The streams are surrounded by century-old beech trees. Even dead trees are left standing. This one is the domain of tiny creatures. This feathered miniature is a Eurasian tree creeper. It's awaited back home. The changing of the guard. Food in, refuse out. And so it goes on. Tree creepers are among Europe's smallest birds. No bigger than a little finger, they can fit into the tiniest cracks. Larger animals just can't pursue them in here. Even so, the parents are permanently on guard. If they feel themselves followed, they divert attention from the nest, only to return moments later. Using its long tail as a brace, it can climb quickly. Long toes with sharp claws provide the grip. It's only in dead, cracked trunks that the tree creeper finds a nesting site that predators can't reach. If the forest were tidied up, the tree creeper would disappear. Small is a real advantage here. Tucked away among the trees are small swampy areas. Moorlands have formed here. In these soggy surroundings, a dangerous predator is lying in wait. Sundews are plants that love insects to eat. The plant raises specialized tentacles on its leaves. Drops of a sticky secretion give the sundew its name. Then it's a matter of waiting. 
Not every beetle succumbs to the trap. But smaller victims satisfy the plant's hunger for nitrogen. That's how it can survive on soils very poor in nutrients. For the many frogs in the moorland, though, the sundew poses no danger. In August, the training grounds put on a very special show. The Zena sheds its camouflage colors. When the sun rises, the splendor emerges. of violet blossoms, forming one of the largest heathlands in Germany. In the 17th century, local farmers felled the forests, resulting in the open country we now see. Elsewhere in Germany, heaths are gradually disappearing. Here, though, the military utilization has kept the Zena open. On the ground, the heather forms a veritable jungle, concealing dangerous hunters. The smooth snake is quite rare in Germany. But here, its favorite food is in plentiful supply. But an agile lizard is no easy catch. Without the possibility of surprise, the snake has no chance. Now, where it's safe, the female lizard has other things to attend to. Having mated 10 days ago, her belly is full of eggs. These need to be laid and hatched in the warm sunshine. Sand lizards often have to cover long stretches to find a suitable place to lay their eggs. Open sandy areas, as in the Zena, have become rare. As a result, the sand lizard is threatened with extinction in Germany. Preventing the lizard's habitat here from becoming overgrown the heath has to be tended. It's a job for a very special task force. The Zena Biological Station grazes heathland sheep on the military training ground, an old breed of horned sheep that have shaped this landscape over hundreds of years. Heath conservators on hooves. A 
thousand sheep get through a lot of food. By keeping the plants short, they ensure the heath stays young and open. Where sheep graze, only heather thrives. Without their deployment, there'd soon be trees growing here again, as happened in the 19th century in other regions, once heathlands stopped being farmed. Back then, the farmers removed the top layer of earth for use as litter in their stables. Mixed with the animal dung, it then served as fertilizer. For years, only Heather managed to recolonize the bare earth. Then artificial fertilizers came along and there was no longer any use for the heath soil. Bushes and trees reclaimed their realm and they had very nearly overrun the military training grounds as well until the British Army took over in 1945. The British brought in the heathland sheep but they'd need at least 20,000 of them to preserve the whole heath. So another answer had to be found. Machines have taken over what the sheep can't manage. The British Army pays a million euros a year to have the heath mown in strips. Heather seeds are spread onto the newly mown areas from the neighboring strips and the young heather launches its advance. In the nature conservation areas next to the army training grounds, other landscape gardeners are sent into action. The Zena Biological Station has been deploying Zena horses over an area the size of 30 football pitches. Like the tracks of the tanks, the galloping horse's hooves tear deep scars into the earth. Which is how the horses too prevent the bushes and trees from taking over. In some places, they don't even let the heather grow. By rolling around, the horses have created their own beauty farm. The peeling treatment in the Zena sand is good against irritating insects. And it's not only the horses that enjoy the warm sand. The sand baths are also the lairs of wolves. Of the European bee wolf. This rare digger wasp loves warmth and sandy soils. The tireless female digs several burrows up to one and a half meters deep. The nests are ready for the offspring. Just one thing is missing. The flying she-wolf has caught a honeybee. It's not dead, just paralyzed by a targeted sting. One bee is nowhere near enough.
The wasp stores up to seven helpless bees in each nesting hole, then lays a single wasp egg in each case. A perfidious but very clever plan. The bees remain alive, even underground. Newly hatched, the larva of the bee wolf can immediately tuck into the waiting feast. Honeybees, as fresh as the day they were caught. What dramas are being acted out just below their hooves? The Zener horses themselves only narrowly escaped a tragedy. They nearly died out. For centuries, they ranged through the region like wild horses. The Second World War put a stop to their breeding. But now they're back and feed on the nutrient-poor plants, producing organic food. To humans, it's just horse droppings. To the hornet rubber fly, it's the perfect place for a lover's tryst. These large insects are extremely rare in Germany because something crucial is usually missing. The female lays her eggs in horse dung, but it has to be of a special kind. When the tiny larvae hatch out, they feed on the larvae of dung beetles. But these thrive only in organic droppings, like those of the wild horses. Since the horses don't receive any fodder supplements, their dung is purely organic. The hornet robber flies also feed on adult dung beetles. The beetle's armor plating is no protection against the sharp proboscis of the aggressor. All that's left at the end is an empty shell. In the forests surrounding the military training ground, other landscape conservationists are being deployed. Scottish Highland cattle are here to keep the forests sparse and open. These shaggy ruminants create a mosaic of forest and sunlit clearings. Grazing forests like these are among the most species-rich habitats in Central Europe. The sturdy highland cattle live almost like wild animals in the Zena. Their calves are born in the forest. The young one immediately sets out to explore its home. And then a little refreshment from the mother. Cattle share the forest with Exmoor ponies. So it can happen that the calf comes dangerously close to the ponies. Fortunately, the kick misses the calf, but the mother cow decides better safe than sorry. moves the calf out of the danger zone. Otherwise, the cattle and the ponies coexist very happily. And together they ensure that the forest clearings don't get overgrown.
Heath sheep, horses and cattle are helping to preserve a unique landscape. But only insects, more or less, live on the training ground itself. Military usage does not only give rise to new habitats. For 130 years, the military has ensured that agriculture stays outside. Where the tanks maneuver, there are no lethal pesticides, no fertilizers, no cultivation. Just, surprising as it may sound, peace and quiet for the natural world. Optimum conditions for life to begin. Who am I? Where am I? Newly hatched sand lizards are tiny creatures. From nose to the tip of the tail, they're just five centimeters long, the size of a matchbox. With an initial weight of half a gram, they can't go into hibernation. Fortunately, the Zena sand has lizard food aplenty. Northern dune tiger beetles, antlions and so on, have to keep their wits about them once the small sand lizards file out. Into a life among tanks and shells. to great expanses of heathland, which will continue to need protection and care. Then the Zena and its demanding inhabitants will also continue to have a future in a landscape which wouldn't exist without soldiers and tanks and the influence of mankind.